Greetings friends, Juan Ningruski here, and I hope you guys are having a Merry Christmas, even though it's a bit a day before Christmas. But um, I just wanted to wish you guys a Merry Christmas, and let us begin with the weekly Russian-Ukrainian War update for the week of December 18th through 24th of 2023. And uh, right now, on in this week, the Russians are advancing all over the combat line, and I call this the Russian push, because the this is... Now the Russians' time to be on the offensive after being on the defensive throughout the summer and fall. And so uh, let us begin with what the progress Russia has made for this week. The biggest actually clashes are happening in Bakhmut. So we're now back in Bakhmut. Uh, Bakhmut was the center of everything for spring and fall of 2022 and 2023, but we are back here. And it is now the Russians who are on the offensive here and mostly in the north. So let's begin with the, the um, progress in the north. So this week, the Russians managed to capture about a third of the village of Bogdanovka. This is a, one of the key villages that the Russians have to take in order to secure themselves along the canal. What is the purpose of the Russian operation in Bakhmut? They want to reach what they call the Servesky Donetsk uh, uh, Donbass Canal. You can see this with my if you follow my uh, uh, pointer finger here, or like my mouse pointer. It's along this line here. Um, that is uh, where they want to reach, and once they reach it, this will begin the battles for Chasov Yar, and the and once the Russians capture Chasov Yar, which is on the do, which is in the height of this entire uh, area, you know, in this entire, if you look at it through this perspective, Ch this area right here in Chasov Yar is in the high ground. Uh, and so once they get the reach of the canal, it will begin the battles for Chasov Yar, and once Chasov Yar falls. That opens the key gate to what I call the Slavyansk line. This uh, defense line from Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, Drustrivka, Konstantinovka, and Toresk. This is a one of the strong. This is the last line of defense, major, huge line of defense the Ukrainians have for Donbass. And so that's the kind of the strategic uh, outlook. Again, the main purpose is to capture the Donbass. So that is kind of the strategic outlook. But first, they have to do a small piece at a time. And the first piece is to reach the canal. And taking Bogdanovka, right now they've entered about a third of the village, is one step towards that. Now, how were they able to enter Bogdanovka and take a third of the village? Bogdanovka is actually kind of on the lowland here compared to the sides. So what the Russians did, they actually made an offensive operation uh, to, the, um, to, the, uh, to the west of it, to the side here. And they actually managed to uh, capture this uh, tree line here. They made an offensive here about two weeks ago and captured a foothold here. But they expanded it and managed to capture uh, this these uh, the, this hill area right here. And they managed to take these hills because this area right here, you can follow this tree line along with this uh, uh, local uh, local height area in this hill right here, is uh, gives a, a height view of all the village Bogdanovka. So the Russians being to, uh, being able to take uh, the these hills, uh, these tree lines, which are located on a bit of an elevated ground, gave them the ability to take a third of this village. There, there are right now rumors that the Russians are assaulting the last fortified height here, and if a man, and some sources say they already took it uh, or taken it, uh, but not uh, it's not been a consensus. So uh, it's I'm not going to confirm it yet, but. It will probably fall soon, sooner or later. And once this area falls, then the rest of Bogdanovka can be taken. So the Russians managed to break through to the uh, west of Bogdanovka and took a few uh, tree lines, which are on an elevated height, allowing them to actually enter the village for the first time this week. Along with this, uh, actually sources are now saying that the Russians have renewed the offensive towards the village of Grigorika here. Again, this is one of the villages Russia has to take. In order to continue their flanking attack, you know, as they get closer to the canal towards Chasov Yar, their flanks will be exposed. So they have to take Grigorivka to secure their flank, but also they need to take in order to reach the canal itself. So this is a village that will be of key importance. The Russians managed to start advancing on this tree line right here, um, and basically are starting to take a few of the points that the Ukrainians have in front of the village, and. Um, so the Russians are now restarting operations towards this village. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But obviously, Grigorica is one of the key uh, places the Russians want to take to reach the canal and also secure their gains in Bogdanovka. Also, uh, in the northern part, the Russians have had a full-scale attack. Um, you know, it's a broad front attack here. 
uh, the Russians took over what they call the Kromova Dairy Farm uh, right here. And they also are advancing in this little like reservoir here. Uh, the Russians, have, a lot of sources are now saying they're advancing down this like reservoir and basically take and basically I think that a lot some sources are saying they kind of linked up the north and southern parts so now they're at the bottom uh like right now they're they're, they're clearing up uh, in front of this area right here so they're right now advancing from Koronova to the south and again that's the purpose of that is to reach the northern part of Ivanivska which we'll talk about in a second another thing is they finally secured the main trench network on what they call the road of life the Ukrainians made a giant trench network here. Um, you could kind of see a little bit of it here. They start, but uh, there's a. It's not showing on the map here, but there's a giant trench uh, network here on this intersection because during the Battle of Bakhmut, the Ukrainians wanted to keep this line open for as long as possible, and it took a long time for the Russians to be able to take this. Um, and so they finally took it actually this time. So now they have a good position here. And they are now uh, advancing towards, uh, and also in this, the, another reason why the, this third of Bogdanovka fell is because they finally took this uh, tree line, which was one of the first main lines of defense for the Ukrainians. And now clashes are ongoing for the second line of defense for Bogdanovka, because the clashes aren't really going down, are happening in Bogdanovka itself. It's mostly happening on the sides here. You know, clashes going on for this hill, and clashes going on for this area right here. Uh, the two main things to look at is for this interse this railway intersection right here, um, this cemetery right here, and what they call the Pompovsky Forest, I believe. This is another uh, strong point that the Ukrainians have. This is the and actually uh, earlier this week the Russians were in control of the cemetery and uh, some sources were saying they were ba they were battling for this Pompovsky Forest. Some sources said, had the Russians already here, but literally yesterday the Ukrainians made a localized counterattack using two battalions or two I forgot the number but a, a huge number trying to like stop the proc because the Russians were just breaking through everything and they managed to recapture this line of defense and prevent the because if this place falls the second line of defense. Uh, this is basically one of the last places the Ukrainians could defend before having to basically fall back to uh, the beginning of Chasovyar. This is a, a part of Chasovyar that's on the other side of the canal, but as you can see, these have heavily fortified high-rise buildings, and so this is a heavily fortified kind of intrusion that, you know, that will be a good place to fall back to, along with having a bunch of forests here. Uh, so... Uh, but this is the Ukrainians are trying to hold on to this area, the cemetery, this uh, uh, railroad in, uh, crossroads here as much as as long as possible. Um, so the Russians managed to capture. They lost control because of a attack, but the the Russians are st made still made gains in this area. They took this tree line. They started advancing towards the south here, and I have no doubts that the Russians will probably this week, this this upcoming week, retake these areas. And once these that that second line, this second line of Ukrainian defenses in Bogdanovka falls, and the Russians manage to take this hill, Bogdanovka will fall, and the Ukrainians will fall back to a new line of defense. I actually have on the my on my weekly uh, Russian my weekly Russian Ukrainian war Twitter thread. I actually um, made a little uh, drawing here, a little you know it's a little weird here, but. Um, so here you could see uh, this is what I was talking about. This first red line, and these uh, these uh, red circles is where uh, the Ukrainians have a, a defense point that they want to hold. Um, and so if these places fall, Bogdanovka will fall, and then the Ukrainians will fall back to this uh, this uh, citadel, this kind of like high rise building fortification near the uh, in front of the canal, and also the village of. I think it's called Canal as well, uh, Kalinova here. Uh, this is another area the Ukrainians will fall back to because uh, this gives them, it's a natural defense point and the, this will prevent the Russians from continuing their advance into Chasovyar because after this falls, it's a bunch of residential areas and then the center of Chasovyar itself is has high-rise buildings. So they could defend the center of Chasovyar, um, but they don't really want a bunch of Chasovyar falling. They want to hold the Russians out before they enter Chasovyar. So this is a good place for them to start holding their line. But they don't want to do that. They want to, you know, make the Russians go as far away as possible. But if this area gets retaken, Bogdanovka will fall, and the, that the Russians will 
the Ukrainians will fall back to these two villages, this village and this kind of extension of Chasivyar here. And the Russians will then focus on Grigorivka and trying to reach uh, the canal through the north here. Uh, but I think the Russians are not going to continue going uh, to you know toward you know toward more west. They're not going to assault Chasovyar directly. That's going to be very bloody. Uh, also, taking that they're going to probably have this canal be still in Ukrainian hands, but they're going to try to reach the canal to the north here, and reach the canal to the south here. And so basically, once they reach, once they capture Bogdanovka, they're going to stop assaulting directly here. They're going to probably start taking Grigorivka. And then, though, they're going to start pushing south. This is in tandem what's happening in the south, where the Russians managed to re-enter Klishevka, taking the northern part of the town. The town has disappeared off the face of the earth, so there's nothing much to... It's not like a... You know, it's basically completely destroyed, but uh, they are they are slowly... Right now, there's attacks going on trying to take uh, this uh, lesser... This is one of the dominant heights that Russia took. However, this is another height that gives the Ukrainians good uh, defenses here. And so they are fighting for this. They are fighting to take this uh, this other hill right here. Um, the Ukrainians are held up on this hill. And so the Ukrainians have a hard time in Klushivka and Andreevka. But uh, the Russians are making slower progress here. But progress is still being made. And the hope is to collapse this line. The Russians are now advancing north of Krudumovka. And trying to along this kind of canal to give themselves a good defensive uh, uh a good place to have defense and pushing the Ukrainians away from this critical uh, defense place for the southern part of D Bakhmut. So the goal is to collapse Klishevka and Drivka and reach this uh, canal here. And this will allow them to assault Ivanivska from the south, from the north, and then uh, because this is the center of all Russia of Ukrainian operations on the other side of the canal, if Ivanivska falls, then, you know, the battle for Chasov Yar will begin at that point. Um, this also begins us to the center of Bakhmut, where the Russians are also advanced. There was a lot of advancements in the Bakhmut dachas. They took, uh, they managed to take, retake these uh, suburbs here, the this farming place here, and they actually also managed to capture the old Bakhmut airport that ha that is right here. And so now they are only a few hundred meters away from the beginning of the of uh, Ivanev the village of Ivanivska. But so the Russians are right now clearing this. I expect they're probably going to try to clear up this center field area here and basically link up the uh, north and the center, and basically have a good area to assault Ivanivska directly. But also once they clear up Bogdanovka, they'll be able to assault it from the north. And then once Klishevka and Drika get cleared up, they get assaulted from the south. If one of those things uh, falls back, let's say it's the fighting in the south, like let's say it takes them longer to clear up Klishevka and Drivka, Russia could still try to attack Ivaniska on two sides. That will still be enough pressure. Uh, but they need at least two, they need them to get, you know, to clear out Bogdanovka and they need to secure their gains to this in, right in front of Ivanivska. Once Ivanivska falls, that is the end of Bakhmut, of R Ukrainian operations trying to take Bakhmut, and the beginning of the operations for Russia to take Chasov Yar. So that's Bakhmut. Uh, there's been advancements everywhere. This is one of the most, where Russia has gained the most. So there's a lot of um, advancements here, mostly in the north. So uh, we see that, and let us continue on other places. So now the next part is what I call uh, the the operation save Donetsk because the b purpose of this these battles in Donetsk is to push Ukrainians away from Donetsk and stop the shelling of it. We actually got con complete confirmation uh, in the South Donetsk area that of the complete uh, capture of Marinka by Russian troops. Now you might be wondering, didn't you say the Russians captured Marinka like a few like two weeks ago? Yes. Uh, so Mar the, you know you can see that this is the Marinka village. They man it and. About two weeks ago, we saw Russian troops in the in these areas right here. Uh, however, in this area, like this uh, in Eva Franca Street, like this area, uh, the, these like kind of fields here, these technically fall under uh, Mar of um, they technically fall under the Marinka administrative zone, and so technically, while the main city itself, the like the main town itself, was taken um, two weeks ago, earlier this month. Um, there were still some places under Ukrainian control which they could still claim they were battling for Marinka, but 
uh, this week, this week, uh, like actually today on the 24th of December, they, we got final confirmation of the total uh, uh, capture of Marinka um, from uh, Russian troops. So they managed to expand beyond the tr and you know gain more positions here, and they also uh, captured the rest of these uh, houses and dachas of Marinka here. And now the Ukrainian positions along this dam with this church and kind of roundabout. So this is the new Ukrainian defenses. I think the Russians are going to continue pushing to give themselves more operational space to reach, um, to begin battles for Grigorivka. So the final complete uh, capture of Marinka has been um, has been announced. And uh, with the capture of, of the rest of this uh, area to the north of uh um, of Marinka, and also the capture of these uh, forests here. Um, I'll talk about why that is, what this, uh, uh, there's also about the importance of this in a moment, but this, I have to also have to talk about another place in this, the Nova Mikhailovka front. So the Russian, the, no, the battle for Nova Mikhailovka began last week in earnest uh, when the Russians began clashes for the village. The Russians are right in front of Nova Mikhailovka. They've been trying to advance, um, you could kind of, I think, no, never mind. Uh, so they've been trying to enter the eastern part of Marinka right here. The Ukrainians still have not allowed the Russians to gain a foothold here. But there's clashes going on on the eastern part of Marinka. And also in the south, the Rus there's been clashes going on over this industrial zone to the south of Marinka right here. So the Russians capture, they still hold on to the cemetery. And the Russians are right now, and the Ukrainians are battling over these uh, industrial points right here. So they're trying to capture these two points and secure themselves in the south. And so the Battle of Mar uh, Nova Mikhailovka is continuing. The Russians are, uh, there's been back and forths over this uh, southern industrial zone. There's been back and forths over the eastern edge of Nova Mikhailovka here. Um, but the Battle of Nova Mikhailovka is continuing. Another big thing to mention here is that the Russians managed to capture the major Ukrainian fortification called, uh, uh, what was it called? Z Fuck, I forgot. <laughs> But it was some, it was in this area right here, and it was the most heavily fortified strong point the Ukrainians created in the northern part of Nova Mikhailovka. And so, with the fall of this strong point, uh, this will give Russia a lot easier time to put pressure to the north of Nova Mikhailovka, which will hasten its collapse. So this, um, the Russians are also advancing towards Pojeba. Uh, right now, they're focusing on trying to capture. Uh, there's been bombardments of this area right here, trying to cap. And so I think the Russians are going to try to continue expanding this way. And so this south and direction is another place where the Russians are act very active now. And I want to go back to my um, uh, my, my uh, Twitter thread here to talk about it, or at least to show my what uh, my, my uh, points here. So what's the purpose of this? What's happening? So in uh, the purpose of the South Donetsk area is to cut off Ugladar, the Ugladar, because uh, this is the highest point or at least the high-rise buildings gives a high-rise view of the entire operational space here, and this allows this will allow the Russians to, if they capture, if they cut off Ugladar, they could push this entire, you know, open area. All the Ukrainians will be pushed all the way back to Karakova, and this will collapse Ugladar. And if Ugladar falls, this will also complicate U Russian um, Ukrainian positions in Velika Novosolovka. So this is very important because if this falls. This will have a cascading effect effect in a lot of ways that will complicate Ukrainian defenses in the South Donetsk area. But there is short-term goal. That's the long-term strategic goal. The long-term is to, again, capture Donbass, and the southern part of Donbass can be collapsed by capturing Ugladar and pushing the Ukrainians back to this kind of new defense line with Karakova and these uh, big villages and towns along the Volchado River. However, in order to do that, there's small t steps. The first step is the capture of Nova Mikhailovka and Pajeba allows the Russians to continue advancing towards Konstantinovka, which is the short-term goal in um, here. They want to take because Con once they take Konstantinovka, they are now on the side of Ugladar. Now Ugladar could still be uh, supplied a bit, but this will begin the, the process of making it a uh, squeezing Ugladar. So once Konstantinovka falls. They'll continue advancing upwards along this riverbed and capturing village by village, like village hopping, they call it. And and this will strangle the Ukrainians more and more. And this will allow the Russians to move southern, south through the fields and cut off Ugladar and squeeze it out. 
So that is one purpose of that. And when we look at the second, uh, it th when we look now, Marinka is this advancement in Mar that's the short term goal is to reach Konstantinovka right here. But the uh, shorter term goal. That is the short-term goal, and the long-term goal, obviously, is to c get Ugladar and push them back to Karakova right here, this area right here, and create operational space for the Russians. But short-term for this winter push, I think they're trying to reach Konstantinovka. Marinka is also that because uh, they are trying to advance towards Karakova and advancing continuously. They're advancing along this uh, 00510 uh, road towards Karakova, allows the Russians to flank this area from the north as well. So this will make it easier to encircle Ugladar. So the Marika operation supplements the Nova Mikhailovka Ugladar South Donetsk um, battles to cut them off, but it also serves part of the Donetsk operation, which Avdivka is part of, which is to push Ukrainian artillery away from Donetsk. This happened in Marinka, uh, but they need to push them all the way back to this new defense line that the Ukrainians want to create along the Volchacha River and soon I think I'll call this a Volchacha uh, defense line because this is where the Ukrainians will fall back to once uh, Rus if Russia succeeds. It's all because it's a natural defense point, a uh, defense stronghold with a river, lots of heavily fortified villages, towns, and such. Uh, but if the Ukrainians are forced back here, their artillery will be back here, and they will um, not be able to shell Donetsk with conventional artillery anymore. In the short term, the Russians want to reach this area because uh, they want to, for this winter push, they want to take Grigoryevka. Not only will this push Ukrainian artillery further back, uh, but it will also give the Russians a natural defense point along this um, this reservoir, this reservoir right here. And not only will this push U uh, Ukrainian artillery from the south, this could begin uh, Russian operations to begin encircling Krasnogorivka, another defense point that the R Ukrainians have. Uh, in in uh, Ukraine uh, in uh, Donetsk. So if they get right here, they could def they have a good defense point, and they could start advancing uh, t behind Krasnogorivka and cutting it off, so they don't have to assault it directly. So that is what's happening. You know, so that's the short term goal is to take Grigorivka and reach kind of this uh, reservoir here. So it supplements the. Uh, the South Donetsk thing, uh, South Donetsk uh, push and goals, but it also supplements uh, the Donetsk goals of pushing the Ukrainians away from Donetsk City itself. So that's South Donetsk, um, and uh, it's also where the Russians are making a lot of progress. We're going to go to Avdivka now, which is actually kind of what we've been talking about for a while, but now th this is actually one of the first weeks where it's not the center of attention, but there's still clashes and the Russians are still making some gains, mostly in the north. The Russians managed to take another tree line right here and expand their bridgehead here. The, the Russians are basically in control of the center and eastern part of Stepova. The western part is in a gray zone, sort of. Uh, the Russians don't, can't can't seem to, like, it's so small the Ukrainians could just blast this repeatedly, even with their low artillery numbers. And the Russians aren't able to secure it as well, like, as much as they want. And so they're only able to firmly be in control of, like, the eastern and center part of Stepova. But the Russians have a bridgehead now. They're not only in the village where the Ukrainians could attack them from three sides. They are expanding their bridgehead to the north. They are still secure in the southern part of Stepova. And they are also advancing along this rail line towards the Orchechny uh, Dachas right here. You can see them uh, right here. Uh, so this bridgehead still exists, and this is why the Russians have been able to secure Stepova and why Ukrainian counterattacks from Berdychy are still are fruitless. Because at, like before, when the Russians didn't have a secure bridgehead, they just entered Stepova, uh, the Ukrainians were able to counterattack and force them back to the rail line. But now that they've expanded, uh, you know, having a more secure uh, bridgehead to the north and south, they're able to withstand Ukrainian attacks, and so now the Ukrainians can't push them out, and now they are back to Berdychy. So the Ukrainians are in complete control of Berdychy. The Russians are in mo almost all control of Stepova, uh, either directly or indirectly. And then this kind of center area, kind of like from here, you know, to here, so is like a gray zone. And so the Russians are expanding their bridgehead. They have secured it. They have not lost it, so that's good. They are also advancing along this rail line. I expect probably. Uh, they're going to try to take these two um, trench lines right here to make expand this bridgehead just a bit more. 
and uh, also get closer to the Orchechny Dachas, because if the Russians are able to take this, because this is on a hill, uh, not, they will get fire control over this road, which controls uh, Ukrainian, um, you know, which uh, gives Ukrainian supply lines to uh, defending uh, the northern part of Odivka. They also will complicate Ukrainian supplies with this road going towards the north of Avdivka, like kind of in this area right here, with Nova Kolonova and so forth. And so um, it's going to be a big task, but if the Russians take this, they'll take fire under fire control um, Ukrainian positions and Nova Kol in fire control over Ukrainian defenses. So uh, small, small advances, the Russians are still holding onto their gains, um, but only small advances in expanding those gains. The, Rus the Russians are also making small progress here. They advanced a little bit north towards Toninka. They advanced a little bit towards what they call the, mi the ninth micro district here with all the high-rise buildings, but little pushes, a few hundred meters at most, nothing too uh, drastic. Um, so there's that. Um, so small progress. There's been no big changes in the south to where, where they entered the residential area, so nothing to speak about there. So we'll have to continue seeing how the Avdivka operation unfolds. Again, part of this is to push the Ukrainians away from Donetsk and towards the new front line in the, what is this called? The, the Volchacha defense line that I'm calling it here. All right, so that's basically Donetsk. Um, there's been no changes Pretty much else, there's been some changes there. So let's talk about Zaporozhye quickly. The Russians have regained control over like the first defense line here. Uh, this is where the first major de U uh, uh, Russian defenses are, and they are now advancing. So the uh, e eastern side of Nova Prohovka is getting more secure. They are also advancing to the west of Robotina. They are right. Russians are trying to attack this tree line right here, um, and they are basically. Uh, pushing the Ukrainians back towards Robotina. Uh, small gains, the Russians are now pushing in this area, however, and the goal here is to just basically re remake the lines where, as they were before the Ukrainian offensive. And so, you know, as long as they, um, uh, as long as the Ukrainians, uh, so the Russians are going to just take slice by slice. It's slow, it's mytho uh, mythological, it's pretty, uh, there's been small advances here, but nothing too crazy a tree line or a trench line or two. But again, those gains over time add up, and unless the Ukrainians do counterattacks to make the Russians restart, they will eventually have this pocket lost. But right now, the focus has been to the north, to the east of Nova Prohovka to secure that village a bit more, and also to the west of Robotina. So that's where the Russians have been pushing in Zaporozhye to clear up this pocket. Let's talk about Kherson quickly as well. The Ukrainian bridgehead in Krinky has been uh, is ha was dramatically reduced this week. The Russians managed to capture the center of Krinky again, and the Ukrainians are now in just a small about a third of the village. Before they had about like two thirds, about eighty percent of the village under their control, but uh, they've lost almost all of it this week. And the bridgehead is extremely small. I'm expecting by the end of the year. The Ukrainians are going to give up this bridgehead. There's been talks in the Western press about how stupid this idea is to attack, be in Krinky. And so I'm expecting that the Ukrainian Marine Brigades, which there are their elite units, they're going to stop attacking here. They're going to keep the territorial defense here, just in case the Russians have ideas of crossing the Dnieper River. And then they're going to bring the um, uh, the Marines to probably South Donetsk, I would say, because you know they want to be able to keep this. Or they may send them to Bakhmut. They're going to give up their operations in Kherson to uh, probably try to stop uh, the Russians from advancing in uh, either South Donetsk or in the Bakhmut front. They've already stopped advancements in Zaporozhye to try to stop the Russians from Avdivka, but now they don't have troops to stop in the South Donetsk and the Bakhmut front. So the, they need the Marines to at least plug up one of those offenses where the Russians are. And I'm pretty sure they're probably going to be sending them to Nova Mikhailovka, Ugladar and such. Um, the Sarisk front is uh, kind of quiet. The Russians are actually still advancing uh, north along this rail line. They may, they are uh, trying to occupy this tree line right here. They got they advanced a bit more north of along this rail line. Uh, the purpose of here is to keep the Ukrainians in check here. They don't want Ukrainians to send troops from Sarisk to Bakhmut. And so, f and threatening this area with small advances 
at least puts them on their toes and doesn't allow the Ukrainians to redeploy voice, forces because they want to keep their forces here to prevent any breakthroughs here. It also helps ease pressure on the Solidar Highway, which is one of the key supply uh, ne networks here for uh, the Russian operations in the north of Bakhmut. Uh, before we last thing, uh, one of the last things to talk about is there's been lots of prog uh, like um, videos of uh, of of, uh, of the Russians attacking Sinkovka, trying to advance into the village. It's there's a lot. The Russians are putting a lot of like I've seen the videos, and the Russians are putting a lot of effort into Sinkovka. I can see why that this opens up if they could take Sinkovka in the forests here, they it opens up the the suburbs of Kupinsk. Uh but I don't know if it's like if the troops if the units here are just kinda ass or that the Ukrainians are just better than usual. But the Ukrainians are holding firm. The Russians have made minimal gains over these last few months, I would say. Um and they have not been able to achieve their goals here. So the Russians are there's some progress, obviously, but it's not enough to actually achieve any of the goals, uh, even short-term goals of like breaking through the Klishevka villages or capturing Sinkovka, with the main goal reaching the Oskol. But they haven't even reached their short-term gains yet. So the Kupin's front has been slow for the Russians. They're pushing here. There's been there's been they're, they're making a real effort here, but it's just not working out for some reason for the Russians in Kupinsk. Where the Russians are making actually some progress, surprisingly, is in the Laman area. I call this the Luhansk Front, uh, maybe the Old School Front, but you know this is part of it as well. Uh, the Russians are actually making more advancements here. They actually managed to, last week they captured this kind of, if you see my mouse, this uh, kind of tree line here and this week they actually managed to capture more areas of uh this uh, tree more tree lines they're now advancing uh towards the village of terni um there's two reasons for this one is to reach the short-term goal of reaching the jir bets river here reaching the jir bets river uh basically allows the russians a good defensive place to uh renew operations to reach the main goal of oskol but uh, not only that, um, it also there's been a, this. They call it the Torskoya salient here, where the Russians have had the salient here, where the Ukrainians are in the south and the north, and they've been basically complicating Russian efforts to secure themselves into Torskoya. But with this advancements in the north, they are now have basically this week secured the northern part of their salient. So it's no longer a salient; it's actually a advancement. And now they just have to be careful of the south. So that eases the pressure on the Torskoya salient while also putting pressure on the Ukrainian positions in the on the other side of the Zhirbets River. So that's been the uh, updates for this week in for uh, Ukraine. Um, there's been the Russians are on their on the offensive. They are on the offensive everywhere, and now it's just a matter of uh, if the Ukraine how much the Ukrainians could hold on to and uh, how much gains the Russia could get by the end of winter. So hope you guys like this video. Hope you guys like the updates I made. Um, if you like this video, give it a like and comment whatever you, your thoughts and everything. Share this video around. Um, and if you like, want to see videos similar to this one and you just want to uh, support me more, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Uh, so aim high and wander on.